proof, it will fail. Dragonflight is stolen. Oh, God. This expansion will kill World of Warcraft for good. It's done after Dragonflight, okay, guys? It's done. It's finished. We had a good run, but it's over now. No. Or you wake up. It's Snape. It's time. After you dealt with that last guy, the mighty Al Gore's put me in charge, and oh, oh, oh boy, have I got something special for you. What's that? Oh no. No. <laughs> oh come. Get away. Come no. on. It's not that. Oh hey, no. What up, boys? I heckin' can't believe it. The MMO genre is saved. What? We can finally what? go home again. Yes! Is what I would have said if this latest World of Warcraft expansion announcement wasn't more rehashed content, shameless copying of superior MMOs, and more furry agenda pushing in the form of some sexy dragussy. You'd think after the complete- It's a bit weird how many furry races we have in WoW, isn't it? Like, I mean, I feel like we have, like, enough at this point. Like, bro, I feel like, I mean, in, like, three or four years, if we keep going this way, we're just going to have to rename the game to DeviantHard. Decline of Actor Blizzard over the last two years, they'd pull out all the stops to try and recapture its original audience. Yeah. And I want to discuss this less than mediocre announcement with you all today. But before we get into that, grab yourself a... Copa Cola, and I suppose you also want a deep dose of the copium to help you with this <laughs> dire situation. Oh no, God. this time it's gonna be different. Blizzards learn from their mistakes. Guys, no, 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 this this time they really mean it, okay? I uh, We thought it was last time. No, 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 I don't need this. No, 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 no. No, it, it's gonna be fine, guys. I know it. It's gonna be okay. But no, we don't use this precious substance for corporate entities trying to exploit our nostalgia for profit. No, 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 no. This stuff is exclusively reserved for indie developers trying to scam us with false promises. Now, oh, all he watched the Kira TV video too. Let's begin, shall we? Then who is the target audience? So I'm not even going to bother overviewing all the details of the announcement because I'm pretty sure 100% of you watched it to see the train wreck, yeah. and oh boy, did they deliver! It was probably I thought that I thought that the the this was good. I did. I thought the uh, I thought the cinematic was good, guys. I was a fan of it. I liked it. it one of the most lackluster disconnected and painfully forced announcements they've ever done for Warcraft. We'll start with the cinematic trailer itself. Jesus. I think this is the first time I've ever seen a Warcraft trailer and it didn't send chills down my spine. We've had tremendous beats like... <clears throat> oh, this was not our destiny. Times change. Leading into Jesus Sylvanas Christ, screaming it was, it was the iconic. so good. Oh my god. Even this one wasn't that bad. And last expansion, having Sylvanas again, completely subvert our expectations by breaking the helm instead of wearing it. Which is really cool. It's like, what the fuck? These events... To be fair, like, that shit came out of nowhere. Like, the, the, the Sylvanas cinematic, like, yes, it was a little bit of bullshit. But that she beat Bolvar like that. But her breaking the helmet like that and it shattering the sky, that shit came out of nowhere and it was really fucking cool. Create an insane buzz within the community that resonate out and infect the whole internet with excitement. Yeah, yeah, Truly, yeah. 
marketing at its best, and True. usually Blizzard's delivery and construction of a cinematic is so well done with a short, isolated story that culminates in a goosebump-inducing moment, but when that moment doesn't arrive in its usual unexpected twist, you're left with bitter disappointment. Well, this pretty much sums up the Dragonflight cinematic for me. I have no emotional connection to that stone guy and his crumbled friends, and when he was falling, instead of subverting our expectations by actually having something unexpected happen, of course, he was just saved by the dragons. To be fair, this did kind of, it was kind of a shock. I thought this was cool. Yeah, I actually, I thought this was cool. I, I, I like this. And it's like, yeah, it was like, yeah. Did you guys like this? I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was cool. I, I, I was, a, I was a fan of it. Yeah, it was, it was nice. And I got goosebumps and cried a little. I didn't do that. I just thought it was cool. Times change. You cannot compare it to Garrosh. Like, I'm sorry, but like, Garrosh, it's just. There's everything else, and then there's Garrosh that's like one tier above that, and like Arthas on the same tier. That was it. You could have seen that coming from a mile away, and when the music hits and we were shown the land basking in yeah. sunlight and dragons, my only thought was... That was shit. But it only got worse from here. I'm. There were a lot of people who didn't like the cinematic. I was really kind of shocked because, like, to me, I, I don't really need a cinematic to be, like, super crazy or, like, really, really, like, fucking, you know, I don't need Michael Bay to direct this cinematic. I, I think that, I, as I said before, I think the direction they're going with Dragonflight is the best direction the game can go in right now. I, I really do. As somebody who's played the game for a long time, I still play it all the time. Uh, I really actually think Dragonflight's the best direction they can go in. You know, stop trying to take these massive leaps into, like, crazy new narratives. Uh, you know, double down on, like, you know, a core Azeroth fantasy. Uh, build up the, the fundamentals of the game. And, and, and then maybe expansion after this will have something else, right? Like, yeah, I, I, that, that's how I see it sure a lot of you would agree. However, before we continue this roast, I do want to compliment Blizzard for the couple of major changes they seem to have actually done right. What's Finally, that? after all these years, they've brought back to us a talent tree once again. Yes. Obviously, this new talent tree- The is talent tree, like, I'm very excited about the talent tree. Like, I, I really, really am, because this is the kind of stuff that, like, like, this is the stuff, like, obviously you're gonna look it up and you're gonna fucking go with whatever they tell you to go with right most people are going to do that however i think there's going to be a lot of people out there who don't do that and they think to themselves i want to learn and figure out what i want to do with my talent and like what i do a lot this is what happens with like poe for example is like whenever somebody wants to get into path of exile i tell them okay follow a guide to the t like do like watch a guide like try to find a build that you think looks fun to play and then find the guide for that build and do it exactly. Do it exactly the way that they tell you. And then eventually you'll get to the point where you think to yourself, wait a minute, well, maybe I can use this item instead. And then you deviate. And usually the deviations that you make at the beginning are fucking garbage. Like they're, they're stupid. Like I tried to go with extra, um, you know, like extra, like, I don't know, like spell damage or something like this. Uh, whenever I was doing Righteous Fire or like, you know, your, your spell hits do more damage and Righteous Fire doesn't hit targets. And like you, you, you learn that and you do it wrong and it's like, oh, that's why I'm doing it, right? So you effectively, you're on guardrails. But you learn through experimentation what, what those guardrails really are and why they're there. So I think it's a very good way to do it. PoE is not comparable. I think it is, and here's why. Because you're going to have people here, and they're going to go, they're going to click these, and they're going to be like, actually, I don't want to go with, uh, let, let's just use this, right? For example, like, I don't want to go with Cyclone. I want to go with Moonkin form because I, I think it'll give me more armor if I'm getting attacked a lot in a battleground. Or, you know, I don't want to go with, like, whatever this is here, uh, you know, Spirit of the Forest or whatever the fuck. I don't know, Bash. Uh, I want to go with Sunfire so I can do more damage. 
you, you know, and then they'll try something different out. And it's these small changes that you can make that will allow you. And then also they'll be like, well, Vin Rookie said to do this, but I want to do it this other way. And it's like you find out that Vin Rookie actually is a fucking, you know, 15 year rank one player. And he was actually right and you were wrong. But you learn that. And you learn through experimentation. And that's a good thing. Uh, Mr. Miss MC basic thank you very much for the five good subs. Thank you very much. Yeah small changes that make you denied from groups No, I don't think that's really gonna happen. It doesn't that doesn't really usually happen then Isn't going to be as fleshed out as our first nostalgic generations of talent trees. It's far more modern or Accessible yeah. for lack of a better word. It appears fleshed out enough to satisfy us neckbeards with meaningful choices yep. But not so full of pointless talents that it sends the casuals into a meltdown for having to use their brain now yeah, Remember this it's like you look at this like this is not crazy. I, I Feel like this is not outrageous at all like a, a normal person could figure this out man uh, Monk thank you very much for the five good subs. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah, I really hope that they, they keep developing this and they keep making it better, guys. Like, it, it's so, so fucking big, man. It's going to be shit just like always. If it's shit, then I'm going to make a video about how it's shit. But what I'm saying is that, like, there are plenty of people that deviate slightly from the norm and they do fine in, in groups. Like, yes, if you're doing high-end content, it becomes more uniform. But for most people, you do have choices of what you want to do things differently with. That's what I'm trying to say. Casuals into a meltdown for having to use their brain. Now, whether this ends up actually being the case is yet to be determined, yeah. but considering how Blizzard react to feedback in the past, I don't have high hopes. Additionally, it seems they're doing some positive changes to crafting and gathering, but we'll mm -hmm. speak about these in detail in the next segment. And yeah. finally, they've given us an updated UI with the ability to move aspects around. A feature made completely redundant by add-ons and has existed in basically every other MMO for about 10 years. But Yeah, I mean, Blizzard's completely, completely far behind. Like, I, I, I don't know why it's not... Like, I, I don't know why they haven't addressed that. Welcome, Mr. Gobro. Yeah, so guys, um, making, uh, I want to say this again. Like, so how do you think it makes me look whenever I watch a video and then my chat is, like, completely shitting on, like, the physical appearance of somebody? Like, how, how do you think I look whenever you do that? Do you think I look good whenever you do that? Do you think I, do you think I, I look good? Like, this is, this, yeah, no, I don't. I don't look, I look bad. And so, like, please... Like just, just stop, just, just stop doing it. it. Just makes me look, just makes me look bad. Like I don't care about your opinion, really. Nobody does, but like, I, I have to because it just makes me look bad in this circumstance. So just, just stop. Like I don't want to argue whether you're right or wrong or anything. I, I don't want to fight. Just stop fucking doing it in chat. It makes me look bad. It makes everybody look bad in chat. Just, just quit it. Cut it out, please. Apparently, this feature is so groundbreaking it needed a whole 10 minute segment discussing it. Yeah. And you know, throughout the whole announcement, I was sitting back and thinking to myself, who is this for? Because this announcement, the delivery, the forced laughter and painful jokes, this certainly isn't made for me, someone with a brain and a deep love for the Warcraft franchise. I came to the conclusion that they have no desire to recapture their original audience. That I feel like with the crafting, I, I feel like the crafting is trying to recapture the original audience. I actually think so. I, I feel like a lot of this looks like the old stuff that we would get excited about and like crafting and like that was a huge part of the game and like vanilla and Burning Crusade and, and, and it became less the case in Wrath, but it still existed. Like, I, I do think so. I, I think this is like a, a fundamental thing. Like, absolutely. Yeah, I, and I wonder, I think that with a lot of the people that are very critical about, uh, about you know, expansion, like, wow, or whatever, like, I, I always wonder, like, what would their ideal announcement be? Like, what did they not say that you wish that they said? Because that's one thing that I think Blizzard needs to understand. And there's a lot of people like him. And this is the same thing I said with the Quasi video, is like, man, 
there are so many people out there who are just fed up with the fucking game. And it's like, what do you do to get those people back? That's what classic is for, after all. They're attempting once again to reach a new, younger audience trying to spark another Fortnite level explosion with bright lights and deeply saturated landscapes so they can push more store mounts and microtransactions onto an audience that won't complain about it. And I, I, no, bro, shut up, shut up, no, like, all right, listen, like, you could say that, like, listen, he, this is one thing you can do with, like, any game, right, is, like, you can easily, like, it's like, Lord of the Rings, what do you mean, they're just walking to a mountain, who cares, like, I, yeah, who gives a shit, like, it's just, I, it's, you can, you can, if you simplify anything, you can turn it into something like that. I mean, absolutely. Lost Ark, yeah, it's like you're just running or it's like Diablo or PoE. It's a, it's a, just a, it's just a mobile game that, you know, has a few bosses you have to pay to win to beat. You know, you and, and like there's a certain element of truth to this and that's why it's popular. But at the same time, it's very reductive. You know, it highlights just how yeah, disconnected just presses Blizzard buttons. are nowadays. Okay, was I the only one who got massive amounts of nostalgic vibes from basically all the areas showcased in this new expansion? You had a Nagrand-esque area with the yeah. elephants and open fields, a Grizzly Hills looking ass zone, and a snowy zone that literally looked like a high resolution version of Dragon Blight. If this isn't obvious re- Oh, what the fuck? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, yo, you fucking furry Well, it's the alliance. What do you expect from a clown company nowadays? Yeah, are you all right. We need to talk about, first of all, the okay. next stop of Blizzard's furry agenda. Bringing in the. Okay, this is something that I can get on board with, all right? We've had enough Blizzard, we've had enough furry races, all right? We have Scalies now, we have the Vulpira, we have the Worgen, we have the Tauren. Um, I think we have another one I can't think of right now. We have enough, okay? Like, let's move on past furries now. Like, they've gotten enough representation, don't you think? The pandas, I forgot about fucking pandas. Yeah, they've gotten enough representation. Scalies Jeez. to complete the crew. Holy yep. shit. Worgen, Volpira, and Pandas were not enough, it seems. Now we need sexy Dragussi to keep the furry <laughs> sated. It's just become a huge unironic meme at this point, and yeah. I'm not even remotely surprised. But Nark, it's a whole new race with a whole new bunch of assets. And yeah, I would agree with you yeah. if that actually were the case, but it's not. These uh, draconoid things are not new assets at all. They're literally just using the rig of the new generation succubus models from Shadowlands, reskinned to look like dragons instead. <laughs> And let's get one thing straight, right? It's got nothing to do with the fact that it's scalies and dragons and stuff. It's the pure laziness of what these represent. Next, we'll briefly touch on the new... I, I think that they should... Listen, I, I don't like the way that... I, I don't think they look great. If, if they release the same way they look right now, I will be fine with it. I don't really care. But, like, you know what it reminds me a lot of? It's like whenever they first announced the Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, remember the original concept art for Sonic the Hedgehog, like the first trailer and everything? And it was just like complete dog shit. It didn't look like Sonic at all. And then they changed it and they made it better. That's kind of the way that I feel about this one. Uh, I just hope that it's going to be better. With the teeth, yeah, it's just it's too much, man crafting changes and although what they're doing seems great introducing a bunch of community interactions and specializations and yeah. work orders etc 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 honestly guys it's just systems that have existed for 10 plus years in the genre and they're only just making their way around to world of warcraft because the team are completely devoid of ideas and innovation instead of making their you see like every time that blizzard does ideas and innovation it was like the uh, covenants or something like this it's like it didn't go well 
Like, so maybe the best idea, like, like uh, original WoW didn't have a lot of massive, crazy new ideas or innovation. It was just good. Like, it's the same as, like, Warzone. Like, besides uh, loadouts, which were cool, Warzone didn't really have a lot of huge innovation on the BR genre. It was just a good game. It was a good game that played really, really well. And that's what was good. Yeah, Gulag, you're tr right. That the Gulag was a good point. Yeah, very good point, Gulag. Uh, but besides, that, like in terms of, like the the gunfighting and everything, it's about the same game, right? And that's good. Like you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes just make a better wheel, and that's fine. Yeah, I totally forgot about the Gulag. I spent so much time in there too. Unique system, they've just straight up copied Final Fantasy XIV and other similar work systems from many of our currently popular MMOs. But hey, that's what Blizzard is known for, right? Taking good systems from other MMOs and yes. perfecting them. But this time, uh, I think they've bitten off more than they can chew, as it seems they've decided to try and replicate one of the best systems ever designed in the MMO genre. What Guild is that? Wars 2's Flying Mounts. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you guys know that I'm an avid fan of the Guild Wars 2 franchise, and I have over 10k hours in that MMO for very good reason. You see, Guild Wars 2, even though it does have some fundamental flaws, ArenaNet actually put effort into their systems and everything is built from scratch for their very uniquely built engine. Because of this, everything introduced into Guild Wars 2 has a- I feel like that's a big problem with WoW. Is it like more and more like that's what Ian said before, like with the uh, like master loot and shit like that, that like, oh, the main reason why they don't have it is like it's some fucking engine problem. Like how much longer? It's like the ship of Theseus, right? At a certain point, like it, it, it's never going to fly. Like stop making it, it, at a certain point. It's like you have to like move past that engine. You see kind of what I'm saying? It was a design problem, not an engine problem. Well, I feel like Blizzard has run into a lot of engine problems. Like, for example, like large-scale PvP, I think, is an engine problem. Uh, the the different problems they said with Master Loot was an engine problem. There was other things like with the, uh, I, I think, like with the UI stuff that was also an engine problem. Like, it, I mean, can't you guys see this is an issue? Like, you like that this, this same, like, player housing is an engine problem again, right? Like, it, it's just like, how, how much longer are you going to try to use and, like, keep this engine on life support whenever it just seems like there's a lot of innovation to the game that can't occur? Like, if, if, if I got a chance to ask Ian another question, that would be it. Like, do you think the engine for WoW holds the game back from doing certain types of innovation that uh, the other MMOs have taken advantage of? Like, that would be a question, like, if I ever get to ask Ian, that will be probably, like, the second or third question uh, I would ask him. Because I think it does. Uh, I, I feel like it's becoming more and more the case, and you know whenever I think it happened was in Cataclysm. Uh, I think that in Cataclysm, whenever they started doing the phasing, and then in Mists of Pandaria, and especially in WAD. Like, WAD was whenever it was like, wait a second, this is not looking good. But Cataclysm, with the phasing and it being fucked up, that's the difference. Write that question down. I, I don't have to. I, I think it'll be something I'll remember. A super unique and polished feel to it. You simply cannot yeah. replicate Guild Wars 2's mechanics and especially, especially their mounts. Yeah, and exactly. And, and like the mounts, it, like example of this is like Lost Ark, right? Lost Ark is on an Unreal 3 engine. It's not even Unreal 4. It's Unreal 3 engine. And there's a certain amount of fidelity that Lost Ark will just simply never have because of that. It will just never have that. And I think the fidelity and the graphics and the way the game looks, I think that matters a lot. Like, I really, really think that matters a lot. And it's like you see a game, it's like, especially in terms of like hitting that mass appeal number, right? Like that's what New World did so well. Is like imagine a game like New World, but it actually has Lost Ark's content. The people would still be playing it. 
As you can see from the footage that I didn't even need to capture myself because everyone is posting this all over the internet. They're literally just ripping yeah, off the Griffin and Skyscale mounts into one bundle and in the process losing the point of both of them as they both have unique roles to play. Yeah. Usually Blizzard are really good at polishing a mechanic made by a scuffed company and selling right. it off as their own to a wider ignorant audience. However, this time... Not not ignorant. We know they're doing it and we appreciate it. Because Guild Wars 2's mounts are so well made and revered as the best in the business, Blizzard are finally being called out in a big way and I can't wait to see the fallout of this when whatever is left of Blizzard's team make a half assed version of them and the game is exposed for its cheap tricks. Now I know Steven Sharif- Bro like he is so negative. Holy shit, he fucking hates this game, man. I love it. I think it's so funny. I, I do. I think it's so funny. A and I know people are getting in their feelings about this. Like, I, I think that this type of feedback is great. I do. I think this type of feedback is incredibly good. Because this is the kind of guy that Blizzard needs to win over. It's not like me. Like, I'm going to play the game. Yeah, it's whatever, right? I play the game, sure. But, like, it's... People that are looking for like things like this, yeah, it's unconstructive. Ah, uh, it's unconstructive. I think you can make an argument for that. You're right, but I think that the uh, the the inherent feeling is not unconstructive. Does that make sense? So like, yes, what he's saying might not necessarily be actionable, but the way that he feels about the game, I, I think, does mean something. Is probably not going to watch this Look video. This room. He's going to play the game. Ashes of creation related. Yeah. So I will talk to you, my dear viewers, personally. By the power of the mighty Al Gore, I will do everything in my power to ensure Ashes of Creation does not stray from the path. Does not make the same mistakes. I will do everything within my power to make Ashes of Creation the best MMO that ever was. And every new if subscriber only, increased- Bro, like, if only. That would be so good, right? Holy shit. It's cringe. Why do you guys cringe at it? It's just funny. We're just It's just a guy having a, having a little bit of a laugh, having a little bit of fun. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I, it's, it's just funny, man. Uh, yeah, I- like, just don't take it too seriously. Uh, I, I feel like people take things way too seriously and they get too upset about them. And it's just like, it's always a better idea to um to not really worry about stuff that much. You know, it's just, it's it's all for fun. It doesn't really matter that much, right? It's okay. Uh, watch this proof video. Oh my God. I just, th 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 there's a part two to this. Holy fuck is my power. You see, ultimately, you don't get addicted to an MMO because flying around on a dragon is cool, or because the crafting has depth, or because the environment reminds you of better times in your life. It's a you lot get of things. addicted because the game is fun, satisfying, and meaningful. I know you don't want to- I, I think that you do, but I think making crafting good and having dragon riding is making it fun, satisfying, and meaningful. But it's not something that's like, it, it's not like a, oh, they add in dragon riding, game is fixed. Uh, it's like, you're taking it as, like, you're going towards like 5% or like 3% or like, you know, 10% at a time. You're not going to just like, you know, flip a switch and everything that was bad immediately turns good. It's like, you're, you're just, you're, you're slowly... You know, people always say, wow, uh, people lose interest in wow through death of a thousand cuts where it's like, oh, this sucks, that sucks, this sucks, that sucks, this other thing sucks. Oh, yeah, by the way, my friends quit, then I quit, right? So it's not just like one thing. It's a lot of things put together. So like in the same inverse way, I think it's a lot of things put together that will make people come back and play the game instead. I hear it, but Activision has sucked all three of these out of their game for the sake of profit and accessibility. I'm just telling you what you need to hear, Oof. not what you want to hear. The Oof. team left in charge of World of Warcraft are completely devoid of talent, direction, and ideas. Jesus. This product is but a corpse of a once great MMO and is used to- God, bro, like, I can imagine there's some people in my chat that just fucking hate WoW, and they're like, yeah! Yes! 
somebody's saying it. Like, anybody who hates WoW is so happy watching this. Oh my god. Exploit nostalgia and loyalty for as much cash as Bobby and his corporate overlords can get their hands on. Jesus. And it's about oh my time god. We yep. woke up because there's only right now. one yeah. power that Acta Blizzard understand, and that is the power nostalgia. of our wallets. But mm. as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without yours in the comments below. I can't and hey, wait to read this. This is the I'm perfect the video to segue into Guild Wars 2's release yesterday at the same time as World of Warcraft's announcement. How so keep an eye out on tomorrow's video, or even better, why not hit that bell to get notified as soon as it goes live? Banark, I heckin' love furries. World of Warcraft is for me. And to that I say, listen, kid, if you think introducing the scalies into your community will save the game, then you're high on copium. Jesus Christ. <gasps> Bro, this guy is not having it. 500 look at this it has 17,000 views and it has 493 com let's say it has 500 comments like what's the ratio for that <laughs> dude this video is so fucking opinionated oh my god bro people are furious about this let's see um 980 it it has half as many look it has 493 comments 984 likes oh my god like it, it's just it's nuts uh, expansion seems designed aesthetically and mechanically specifically to prevent a second exodus of wild players making a certain other mmo explode they stolen ideas from a good game i'm happy about it that's true that's the way i feel about it too Oh my god, man. It has 425 downvotes. I don't really care about the downvote extension. It's it's not accurate. I've seen people tell me how many video how many downvotes my videos have, and it was wrong. So that's kind of what I assumed. He stirred the hornet's nest. This is just oh my god. I've never seen somebody make people this mad before. Well, actually I have. But like still, it, it, I mean like this is it, it, it's just it's crazy. And like he even has like a, he has like I don't know I kind of want to watch the follow up video for this. I could watch the follow up video for this and then just watch the Genshin thing tomorrow because I I, I really feel like this is yeah I, I feel like I have to almost uh, like greetings uh, yeah we have to do this like this is so good I love it okay l let me see here watch it yeah 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 maybe I, there's a few other things so i was gonna watch the johnny d do both okay all right all right all right i do want to do a couple of things in wow do the mount off and i wanted to play some vampire survivors today too so we'll see what we have time for okay uh, watch misshapen chair okay guys look i i literally have like i'm not even kidding you like 20 hours of react content i cannot do it all in one day all right so just just chill we're gonna do what we need to do all right so give me one second let me link the last oh i didn't link the last video i'm good there yeah i i, I think so it was a, it was a good I, I as i said even though i don't really agree with it i think it's a good perspective to have yeah for sure do it now chill media share day listen there are so like honestly every single day on my stream I don't even have a plan for most of the time that I go online. I'm like, I don't know. There are so many things for me to have to do. I don't even have to have a plan because my chat will remind me of like five things that I just didn't do. That's it. Yeah, no, literally no plan. All right, here we go. Let's see this. So this is his proof. Obviously, the first video uh, did not go over very well. And he has returned now for round two to finally uh, dispel the illusion these delusional uh, WoW furries have about their furry game being popular again. Because it won't be. This guy really hates WoW. Yeah, this is great. Okay, let's see it. Here we go. Keeper. I heard this was the best place in town to get the highest quality mounts. Oh, hello there. Yes, you heard correctly. This is Blizzard Emporium. Uh, we sell the highest quality mounts. So can I just ask which of the mounts you're looking to replace? Oh, yes. I'm just looking for a replacement for my Griffin. She's 10 years old, you see, and I think it's about time I retired her for a... Uh... 
an upgraded model, if you know what I mean. Ah, yes, a fine specimen, but clearly inferior to our models. Um, if you could just take a look at what we got available. What's oh, this? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what the? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think my griffin's got a couple more years left oh, in her, no. so, um, I, yeah, don't worry. Oh, I sure? feel like this would not have been funny at all if it didn't have to do, if, if the sound effects made it fucking funny. The sound effects made it great. You get six months game time. <sighs> Bobby, there's a problem. People just aren't buying it this time. Shit. The time has come. Execute Order 66. It will be done, my lord. What the hey, what up, boys? After the sheer amount of pure oh my God. in my comment section for my WoW announcement <laughs> video, I was inspired to follow that video up because in between People all the brain-dead copium-filled comments, there was one particular comment that kept coming up as an Bro, I know, I love whenever this happens. So like it's a, it is, I've done this before too, right? Is like you're you're making YouTube videos and you make a video that's like opinionated and and you just fucking you know that you're right and, and like you you're so sure that you are fucking right and then you read a comment and it makes you so fucking mad you make an entire video dedicated to refuting that comment and everybody else who's dumb enough to think like he did. You know, like, yeah, it's, yeah, well, quantity, quantum, right? Well, at least somebody made a video about that, but yeah, this is amazing. I love it. For why people I did this are too. excited for Dragonflight. I think it's great that they're taking mounts from Guild Wars and making it better. True. Now, it's no secret that Blizzard That's have been ripping too. off other superior MMO systems and implementing them into World of Warcraft for the last 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. However, systems and mechanics are very different things and that's why there's so yeah. much controversy surrounding this particular aspect of Dragonflight's showcase. And you see my friends, I need to rely on controversial topics to actually make my channel relevant. So we'll be discussing the potential- That's okay, that's what everybody does. You just- the thing is like, listen, what you've really got to work on is you've got to work on your thumbnail game, okay? Like, you really do, like, this is, like, you've got to have some faces, like, look, you go over here, and, and like, you've got to have, like, you know, an anime girl or something like that. Like, look at Asmon Gold, look at this right here. You've got, oh, look, it's an hour ago. I've already, a WoW player, but look at this. As well, every WoW players instantly hate him. So immediately, right, it's like all the expressions are crazy. Oh, another video right there. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Oh my God, what is this, right? Editors are working right now to fucking do that. Yeah, you. that's not, it's not about the controversy, but to be fair, the first video I posted was about the controversy. That's what it is. By the way, guys, I actually looked at the stats. We had over 100 million views in the last month on YouTube. On just YouTube, we had over a hundred fucking million views. Can you believe that shit? That's a lot of people. Potential of this Dragonflight of my channels put together. Video, but it's a lot. Before we get into that, grab yourself a Copa Cola because just alpha, systems right, guys? Yeah. are pretty easy to implement, and usually the Blizzard polish does genuinely tend to make them better. But Blizzard yeah. have never attempted to straight up copy a mechanic from another engine directly into their own dated and questionably- Is that true? I feel like we've had a lot of direct copies. Yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, there's probably gotta be like at least, I don't know, 20 examples of that. I mean, like, I'm trying to think. Like, I don't know. I, yeah, Flappy Bird. That was, yeah, Flappy Bird was good. Uh, yeah, Plants vs. Zombies. We had that one. Yeah, Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to really think about that. I, I, I feel like they've probably done this before. Broken one. Can guess. Modern Blizzard's team actually pull it off? Well, according to their track record of the last 10 years or so, uh, yeah. I'd say no. But 
Well, I'll explain why in today's video. Now, maybe he only likes Garrosh because way, Garrosh is bald. Let's begin, shall we? I'm just I'm saying that ahead of time now, so the comments can't say it. Now, my little intro there should have filtered all the brain-dead people of this video with a juicy dislike, and anyone who still remains, I will assume you're not too far gone to see the light. Or oh my god, bro, like, it's just, I, I love these videos, man. Whenever you see a YouTuber, like, double down on some fucking opinion they have, like, it's just, oh my god, it's, they're so fucking funny. I can even go back and watch my own videos of myself doing this, and even I think it's funny whenever I do it. I can laugh at myself. It's fucking great. Because, like, I remember I did this with, like, there was one time I said, I, I don't remember what it was. It wasn't the Amazon thing, it was another thing. Um, oh yeah, I said that... Uh, YouTube wasn't censoring videos about the Canada trucker thing because like somebody got their live stream shut down and people said it was politically motivated and I said well this is one time I don't think that's I, I don't think we can there's not enough evidence to say this yet right and people are like yes there is what did George Soros pay you what do you want in the Canadian payroll now oh look at this Asmon's part of the new world order I bet he's a fucking lizard I knew it you know, like, I bet he voted for Biden, too. Can you believe that? Voting for Sleepy Joe? Oh, my God. I thought he was one of our guys. I thought he was based. It turns out he took the blue pill and sold out. And I read all these comments, right? And I was so fucking annoyed by them. I'm like, what the fuck? And I wanted to make, I made a video, and I read them. I'm like, you guys are fucking dumb. Like, what do you mean? I, I, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying there's not enough evidence to say that it did. Like, I, I'm just not sure yet. A and people just were not having it. A and I was just like, I was about to make a third video, and then I realized that it didn't matter. I'm like, actually, who cares? They're going to think what they're going to think. It's, it's like, I'm not going to win this. Like, it's like, it, yeah, th this is... Like, I was, I was laying in bed, and I was reading the comments... And I was gonna, I was thinking to myself, like, I want to get up to like to ban these people from the channel. And then I realized that that would require me getting out of bed. And I was like, uh, whatever. They're gonna say what they're gonna say, man. And that was it. I never thought about it again. <laughs> you're just hate watching but who doesn't hate watch the odd clown on youtube or twitch nowadays i gracefully accept your hate in the form of ad revenue allow me to explain exactly what this video is and what my channel does you okay. see i'm sick to death of the state of the mmo genre for over 10 years now this genre that i love has slowly become a corporate cesspit that has broken us down as a player base removing i feel like they've done that with every game like they they have i mean really i i i definitely feel like that systems and gameplay over time to implement pay-to-win systems under the guise of convenience and accessibility. My Agreed. channel's focus is to try and put a stop to this by highlighting where the genre has oh, gone wrong. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, that's what I, I, I said the same thing four years ago, man. I remember I poured salt on my head because of this shit. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Like, you gotta, you gotta advocate for the law, okay? You gotta advocate for the law to change. Yeah, it's very nice. Listen, I, I, I hope he sees this. I, I, I would love to have you on my show and talk about this. I, I think it will be great content. Let me know. ...over the years, as I do believe we still have a voice powerful enough to make a difference. Oh. This is also why my channel... Yeah, that's not true, by the way. Um, it, it, we don't have a voice to make a difference. It's not true. Uh, that it's just simply not. And, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I, I talked to the guy that runs DBM, and he was like, he DM'd me, he's like, hey, you know, I want to talk to you about the add-on stuff. I'm like, that's great. Do you want to do it on stream? He's like, yeah, sure. And so uh, we're going to talk to probably him, too, because obviously, like, you know, I've made my opinion on add ons pretty clear. Ian made a statement on it and he wanted to give his take on it. And so we're going to probably do that. I don't know, sometimes uh, sometime next week or something like that. And uh, the reason why I think pay to win is going to become more popular and people were OK with that. Vampire Server Dev Talk win. It's on their side. It's on their ball court. Uh, I, I responded back to them. And, um, you know, uh, wait, did I? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. That's good. And uh, yes, I did. Uh, I'll follow up with it in about a week or so if I don't get a response. 
<clears throat> yeah, so we've got a lot of these, okay? Uh, the reason why pay-to-win content is becoming more popular is because the age gap inside of gaming is becoming larger. So before before then, uh, gamers were about, you know, like 10 to 30-year-old guys, and that's about it. And I think that's always going to be the largest amount of people that are gamers, but a large amount of people that used to grow up, let's say they raided in Burning Crusade, well, now they're playing, they're playing, sorry, Freudian slip there uh they're playing lost ark and they're spending money on it and i think the reason why people are more okay with pay to win is a fundamental value that i always assume is true is that people will advocate in their best interest in all cases even if it's in a more deceitful way and the fact is that those guys that were in college or high school raiding and burning crusade a lot of these guys are now balding men with families and probably also a, a decently paying job so now it's in their benefit to play a game that's pay to win because they could afford to pay for it whereas before back then they couldn't afford to pay for it they fucking hated pay to win games so i think the fact is more people were okay with pay to win games because more people can afford to pay that's that's actually what i think and it's literally that fucking simple and that's all there is to it now obviously there's a little bit more nuance to it but i think that's a huge factor is that the same guys that grew up playing games and hating pay to win now that they can pay to win and they don't have as much time hey you know what maybe it's not that bad but, you know, we'll have to see. I think that's what I think. A family job, not balding, and I can afford to pay for, for Rogaine. Check. Shut up. Shut up. ...is focused on an upcoming indie MMO called Ashes of Creation. Yeah. This is the only MMO that isn't governed by a corporate entity, pulling the strings to compromise gameplay and progression for the sake of profit. Ashes is an MMO brought to life by one man and his team. It's still in early development and has a promising future, but the most appealing thing about Ashes for most people not entrenched in this mm -hmm. game's copium-filled promises is that it's already completely funded to completion so they don't need our money to reach their goals it's i hope you know that one of the other really big selling points for lost ark was the fact that it's not a publicly traded company and it's a privately owned company and the person who owns the company is pretty much okay with gold river doing whatever he wants now, this does not mean that I do not have faith in Ashes of Creation, but it's important to look at what's real. It's very important to see what is real. It's coming whether you like it or not. That's why Ashes of Creation is so different to the other Kickstarter scam MMOs and has gained the ire from big names like Asmongold, Lazy Peon, and Shroud. Oh, if look at Ashes that. of Creation can show the corporate overlords driving our games into the ground today that actually putting time and effort into systems, launching them in a complete state, listening to feedback, and releasing content-rich patches rather than shallow, boring ones, genuinely makes a considerable profit, they may rethink the way they treat not only our beloved franchises, but also how they treat the developers who create them. Or they'll You know, again, it's just really not that true. I'm kind of worried about this, and I don't think it's really going to go anywhere. But, uh, you know, it's good to see people fighting for it. Uh, I, I, I really think that uh, what we're going to have to do here is you have to have legislation. You have to have legislation, and if you don't have legislation, you don't have anything. Um, listen, people wanted to protest Kellogg's. How's that going? You know what Kellogg's did after people protested? This is how smart Kellogg's is. People are like, man, I'm not going to have Kellogg's anymore. They hate unions. We love unions, but they hate them. They're like, man, people aren't buying stuff with the Kellogg's logo. And there's a guy in the back in the boardroom. Uh, why don't we just take the Kellogg's logo off the fucking, uh, uh, off the food. And so he's probably got a promotion now because they did that and it worked. So yeah, didn't the union win? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, sure, the union won, but that's something separate. Yeah, that's separate. 
It's the same with Nestle. Yeah, look at Nestle. It, even like if you want to take any solace that you did get some some form of a payback with the case with Kellogg's, look at 20 of the other ones. Look at Nestle. Look at Activision Blizzard. Look at a lot of these companies. Um, the, the AT and T. Yeah, I mean General Mills. Yeah, a lot of these are like this. Guys, it's just it, it, you can only do stuff if you have the, the legislation. People will never say Apple. Yeah, look at Apple. Oh, man, Apple. Yeah. Guys, you see what I'm saying? Uh, fires start slow, though. <laughs> what if the fire is pay to win and not your... What if the fire is pay to win and not your uh, avoidance of it? What if the what if what if you're what if the fire is what you don't like, and it's not you? We'll just continue milking us, and the genre will fall even further into pay to win and brain dead mechanics. It will. <laughs> Now, if you're still insisting that I'm attacking this poor, defenseless, multi-billion dollar Ryan corporate fire, company yeah. claiming we've not seen anything yet, allow me to just remind you that this showcase has actually shown more than any of a previous World of Warcraft announcement at a similar scale. We've seen new zones, we've seen multiple revamps with the crafting changes and talent tree. They've showcased a whole new race and class mm -hmm. alongside a cinematic with the brand new borrowed power that seems to plague modern WoW. But Nark, they didn't show any borrowed power, so they've got rid of it for Dragonflight. Listen guys, if having flying mounts and unique flying mechanics be tied to one specific part of the world isn't borrowed power, then I don't know what is. This doesn't solve- I don't think it's borrowed power. I, 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 I don't think so at all. I think borrowed power has like a very, very obvious meaning. Uh, I think like whenever you talk about borrowed power, you're talking about things like corruptions, essences, things that impact gameplay on an end game level. Like, that is what people are saying whenever they are thinking of borrowed power. They're not thinking of, uh, you know, like even tier sets or, you know, cosmetic things or how many tickets you have at the Dark Moon Fair or, you know, the, the amount of reputation you have on the Argent Tournament grounds. This is not what they're thinking about whenever they're thinking of borrowed power. Obviously, you can, and again, like you can use the definition of borrowed power with pretty much anything. Uh, I think that would work the issue they've just reskinned it at the end of the expansion the mechanics that come with this dragonflight will be taken from us but i can elaborate more on this by bringing guild wars 2 into that the could equation happen. you Falling see you cannot style. simply just copy Guild Wars 2's mounts, especially by just merging together the Gryphon and Skyscale. The mounts in this MMO play a very specific role, and it doesn't work nearly the same way as most other MMOs do. Guild Wars 2 in general is a game that focuses a lot on horizontal progression. You gain no power benefits from any of the progression available to you at max level, so ArenaNet needed to design interesting horizontal progression paths that still give you that sense of progression. They chose well, it, to isn't that what Blizzard was doing, though? I, I feel like that's kind of what Blizzard was doing. Because, like, there was no indication. It seems like Blizzard hasn't really thought, yeah, it seems... Yeah, no, no it's bad because of Blizzard. Uh, no power progression sucks. Well, no, I don't think it sucks. There, there are things that are okay with that. What, what am I still speculating? I feel like it's a very large speculation. I hope that we have dragon riding and we have like dragon battles with raids and stuff. I think that'd be really cool. Fuck the borrowed power idea. I think that'd be badass. Just make it easy to get. Like, yeah, I don't care. Like, oh, wow. Like, oh, we shouldn't have this because we've created this, uh, this vocabulary word and anything that falls under this vocabulary word is categorically bad. No, I'm not going to think like that. It's silly. Do this by giving us, as players, far more freedom with movement. Yeah. As we level up beyond max level in Guild Wars 2, okay. our ability to traverse the world becomes more complicated and satisfying. They coined this the joy 
of movement, a term I am rather fond of as it describes Guild Wars 2 very, very well. The mounts okay. tie into this system very heavily as your progression path through their second expansion, Path of Fire, was mostly about obtaining and powering up these mounts to be more efficient at what they do. There were four base mounts advertised at the launch of Path of Fire and each one serves a very specific purpose. The Raptor excelled at ground movement and allowed us to lunge across Great Chasms, That's an ability cool. only available specifically damn. to the Raptor. God and the other damn. three also had very exclusive abilities too. The Bunny allowed us to leap up vertically, the Skimmer cool. allowed us to move across bodies of water with limited floating capabilities that eventually gets upgraded to be used underwater. And finally, the Jackal allowed us to teleport short distances and move through special portals to reach hidden places. I However, like that. That's ArenaNet cool. Net added a fifth hidden mount in Path of Fire that wasn't okay. advertised in any way, shape, or form. This was a discovery left for the players to find, and the first couple of weeks of this expansion's launch, the community exploded with excitement over this fifth hidden mount. This mount was the Griffin. It was an extremely cool and well hidden achievement for you to follow that took you across the world, using your mastery of all four base mounts in order to unlock the ability to purchase the Griffin. And That's the price cool. itself? A hefty 250 gold. This isn't chump change, and to put the price into context, a legendary weapon costs about 1,000 gold. 1,000 gold for a cosmetic upgrade yeah what about it yeah you see you're not just given this mount you need to earn it and this mount has a very specific purpose just like the others it doesn't make all other mounts obsolete sure it has no. some pretty impressive uh, gliding and swooping yeah, abilities but the cool. griffin isn't a true flying mount it takes considerable knowledge and practice to learn how to actually use the griffin to its maximum potential and even then you can't just use it to get anywhere you want now there is another flying-esque mount in Guild it's Wars 2 called the Sky Scale, and it yeah, has... Yeah, it, that's called a dragon. The Sky Scale, that, that's a fucking dragon. So yeah, I think that looks cool. Absolutely. The cosmetics in games, I think, do matter a lot. But like, I mean, the truth is, that, like, uh, Ashes of Creation is already selling cosmetics, right? And so like, I feel like every game sells cosmetics. Uh, ironically, you know which game is like probably the least pay to win of any game? is new world and i'm not wrong new world is actually le less pay to win than pretty much any other game so uh yeah who's ready to play new world guys a similar process of acquisition to the griffin just less hidden the sky scale isn't a true flight mount either it has its limits yeah. and is used in very specific scenarios to reach specific places sometimes the griffin is genuinely better than the sky scale to reach certain places and sometimes the sky scale is better you need to learn the mounts to know which one is best but yeah. why am i going on this massive tangent about mount mechanics in an mmo you will likely never touch because you're addicted to wow because right. You see, you can't just copy a mechanic without understanding why the mechanic is limited in the first place. Allow me to explain. Okay. World of Warcraft is fundamentally designed to be an MMO with unlimited flying, but Blizzard are looking to create an expansion that tries to limit that ability with some interesting Guild Wars 2 inspired mount mechanics. But you see, the thing that makes the Griffin flying so much fun is that their engine is specifically designed to cater to this type of movement. The mounts have true weight to them. Their movement is limited and deliberate. If I move towards the left on my mount, there's a wind up and a wind down. There's a turning curve and you don't immediately stop when you want to. This demands skill from me as a player. And it's that See like for me, this reminds me a lot of uh yeah, that's Yeah, I'm I'm not about that, man. Like I I like how the wow mounts go. Like you just go, you fly somewhere and then you're there. Like yeah, I, I like inertia. I feel like inertia mechanics in games they sound really cool theoretically, but very soon they create frustration. That's what I think a lot. 
is that this sounds really good. I think the best example of this is something like PUBG. Like PUBG has like awful inertia mechanics and I don't really enjoy it a lot. Whereas like Fortnite doesn't have that kind of stuff and I just in general think that it's a better game. Skill requirement that makes these mounts so well received. You can only mimic the feel of Guild Wars 2's mounts by genuinely making them feel like an extension of your character rather than a tool to get from yeah. A to B faster. You know, like the mounts have been in WoW for the last 20 years. Now, Unfortunately, I don't have time to play WoW in the current year, but that doesn't mean I want the game to burn far from it. I'm frustrated at the state of the game and I just want it to be better. However, I'm not entrenched in the Warcraft community enough to make a difference. That's your guy's job. If you can take okay. anything away from this analysis video, please take this with you. Feedback is extremely important. Blizzard have failed yes. to listen to us for the True. last three expansions. Legendaries were called out in Legion and nothing was done about it until the very last patch. BFA True. was a complete mess and nothing was done about that until the very last patch. And Shadowlands, well, True. don't even get me started on Shadowlands. They have an infamous reputation for throwing all this marketing into our face and it's time to stop blindly thinking that the game will be magically fixed this time. You need to let your voice be heard and from the showcase of this Dragonflight mechanic, to me, it doesn't seem like they understand it at all. They're simply just trying to copy it, but that's... Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I don't think any of us can really know that. Like, I really think that we don't have enough information to make a judgment on that. Because we've only seen, like, how much have we really seen of this? Like, maybe a few minutes. We don't really know what it's going to really be like in-game. Uh, we don't know, like, what's actually going to happen with it, what the system is, how it moves, or, or any of that, right? And, and also, like, even if it's dog shit, like, yeah, that sucks that it, that it would be bad. But, like, the reason why the other stuff uh, was bad, like things like Legendaries, etc., is that these were things that affected the entire experience for every single player. Same thing with Azerite armor or same thing with uh, with corruptions. Is that pretty much every single player in the game had to deal with these problems. And that's much different because it's something that's a it's a core fundamental. Like Dragonflight and Dragonflying is not a core fundamental of the game. Now I, I view this as kind of the same thing as like uh, remember whenever WoW added pet battles in Mists of Pandaria? And it was like kind of its own closed thing. And like, yeah, there were some cool things you could get with pet battles. But for the most part, it was just like its own thing. I, I feel like dragon flying is probably going to be the same thing. Like, I can't imagine you needing dragon flying to get like mythic level gear or something like that. Or heroic level gear. No, I just don't think that's going to happen. But I don't know. Like, again, it it's impossible to, to really know. And, like, we'll have to see, like, what the features are. But I would say one difference is that, like, whenever you go back and you look at, like, Legion, uh, BFA, or Shadowlands, uh, Legion with the legendary system, BFA with Azerite armor, and Shadowlands with, uh, with Covenants, like, these were problems that were abundantly clear that they were going to be problems before the alpha even got released. Like, this was something, it's like, I did the bingo, right? Uh, you know, designed a system announced that has obvious flaw that Blizzard refuses to acknowledge. With Dragonflight, we haven't had that yet. And I want to emphasize the word yet, because there is a good chance that this could come out and we will be in the exact same problem, the, the exact same situation, having the exact same problem that we had with Shadowlands and BFA and Legion before that. However, I think that it's important to say, this is good, we like this, keep doing more of this, because if you're just mad about everything, then it gives people no direction to go in. It's like, well, then what do you want? You see what I'm saying? So far, it's good. Yes, so far, it's good. Okay, that's what Blizzard does best, right? However, if they do not nail the feel of this Dragonflight mechanic using their extremely dated and limited engine, the game will die guys, with this expansion. So please, Wait, what? please reference Hold what up. I've explained this date. 
not nail the feel of this Dragonflight mechanic using their extremely dated and limited engine, the game will die with this expansion. So please. I have a really good feeling that Dragonflight and the game dying are not going to be. Uh, there's no. Like, th that's just. That's. That's total bullshit. Okay, it's, it's complete and total bullshit. Like, if Dragonflight is bad, literally nobody is going to give a shit except for a handful of people. This is not why people play WoW. This is a new feature that Blizzard adds into the game. And if it's bad, it doesn't really matter. Now, I, I'm sure that he could make the argument that he's not really saying that it's because of Dragonflight. It's because of the metaphor of what it represents. And it's like, yeah, sure. You know, that now we're getting into like a theoretical thing. But like in general, Dragonflight success or lack of success, I think will exist independently of the success of the expansion. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. Dragon riding? Yes, yes, dragon riding. Please reference what I've explained in this video for them to truly understand what makes a mechanic like this feel so good. And I will pray for you. Pray that they don't just sit on their fake corporate thrones pretending they care like they've done for the last 15 years. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without yours mm -hmm. in the comments below. And hey, if any World of Warcraft Andes actually made it to the end of the video, I'm pretty impressed because I didn't hold back at all during that video and you took that abuse pretty well. About five or six years ago, the World of Warcraft player base were quite reasonable when it came to criticism towards World of Warcraft. However, recently, it seems people are so desperate for a good MMO that they're willing to forget everything Blizzard has failed upon. Well, it's like making crystal meth, you know? Um, it's like you start off... Yeah, no, it's like this, right? So, so bear with me on this, right? Bear with me on this. So originally you start out with something very large and you have the whole community. This is like, uh, you know, Mr. Pandaria. And, and then you, you, you burn off and you you condense and you you basically get to the very very core of it and you're using you're losing a lot of that extra stuff and and, and that's what the difference is that's why i think it's going to uh that's why i think people are much more defensive of warcraft is that everybody else who agreed with you already stopped playing they already stopped playing they're done so the only people that you have left is that little bit uh, of fucking uh, that little bit of copium these are the people that love the game they will always make excuses for the game and it doesn't really matter what happens they're gonna always make excuses for it they're gonna always figure out some way that it's okay you see kind of what i'm saying now does the crystal meth analogy make sense see you guys thought i was wrong huh yeah now it makes sense doesn't it and they just desperately want wow to be good again this includes me, of course, but blindly accepting Dragonflight for what it is at face value isn't good enough. So, I hope you like this video and maybe we can spread this message to more people. Gnog, I heckin' love WoW. The game is saved. How dare you critique Blizzard. And to that I say, listen kid. If you genuinely believe Blizzard are immune to criticism after the last five expansions, then you're high on copium. Jesus Christ, bro. Like, this video is going to make this video you made so many people mad. Oh, my God. All right. Are y'all ready to see the comments on this one? Oh, my God. People are going to mold on this. Um, what I loved about Guild Wars 2, uh, let's see, uh, 445 comments. It's true, Dragon Rider, since it's borrowed power in a different sense, which is very true. Borrowed power is not mandatory. Let's see what his response was. Um, boost and swooping become genuine upgrades for all of our mounts and use everyone in Azeroth. 
Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they even can do that. Flying mounts with none of the physics to make them feel incredible to fly on. People have very good reasons to be skeptical. Well, we don't really know what the physics are yet because like we haven't seen them. But yeah, that could definitely be the case. I mean, for sure. Sort for new. Those are always spicy. So many mauled in comments. There are not that many. Legendary is not just cosmetic. Used on every character. Change stats. Oh, that's about Guild Wars 2. Got the feeling you're way off base with dragon flying. They're not going to scrap it after this expansion. This is likely a permanent addition. Yeah, we've said that before with other systems as well. Um, I, I don't really know if that's going to happen or not. I have no idea. But I don't think dragon riding is borrowed power in the same way that like corruptions or uh, the heart of Azeroth or uh, artifact weapons are. Now, I don't really feel like they're going to play. It's going to play an integral, integral, sorry, role in in what we do in the game. I don't think it's going to affect progression. I don't think it's going to affect PvP, for example. Uh, this is going to be something that's like its own closed system, similar to kind of like what pet battling is, minus maybe a few other uh, added features that could overlap, right? Like finding different things for achievements and stuff like that. Uh, that that's kind of what I'm expecting. Now, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. But this is my guess, okay? This is my fucking guess. Wondering if they had special flying to the new zones, the Guild Wars 2 added new races and stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't really know a lot about Guild Wars 2. I've never played it, so it's hard really for me to say. But yeah, of course people are going to be upset about this. People are going to be pissed off. Um, I don't think dragon flying in general is going to have any sort of real impact as to whether the game is successful or not. I think it's going to exist completely independently of that. Dragonflight is successfully implemented. Do you think a complete uh, overhaul of movement and mount function wow would be a good change? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think people like the inertia type stuff as much as people think they do. And I think a lot of people just like flying the way that it is now. Maybe you could add in extra features like that. But I don't think that you should add in an inertia and weight system like Guild Wars 2 has. Uh, I, again, I feel like a lot of games that play that way are clunky and hard to control for casual players and it ends up being uh being a barrier to entry so yeah that's kind of like what my general opinion on it is but you know overall i think it really depends i'm like you guys video want to give it a like give him a sub if you agree with them and uh we watch this guy's videos pretty regularly if he'd want to come on and talk about uh you know how he feels about the expansion i'd be glad to do that anytime